It's stewardship of a place to the pay is not what it's for, and I am so impressed. And so I do want to, we have a, a couple of uh, three elected, I think three elected officials in here today with Senator Kevin Vandeweg, Commissioner uh, <laughs> Mark Matthias, I just love to see hands in this room for just a huge applause, mostly from me, of people who have ever run for office or are currently running for office. Thank you. What a, what a selfless, selfless act. And I am just amazed by anyone willing to um, go through that. Uh, thank you. I'm seeing in my notes a lot of things that other people have already said, so I'm not going to um, repeat them. But I will say that in 18 years, this event has helped to raise half a million dollars towards farmland conservation. And that's in 18 years. And funds from this dinner um, specifically go to support the efforts of farmland whether it's the, on, on these 18 farms, whether it's the operating cost of making those farms happen or the direct capital cost of acquiring them. And I did a math, some math a few years ago, trying to get a sense of to what degree do we leverage our tax dollars back into our community. And the best I can figure is from this dinner alone, it's about eight to one. So about every dollar can, um, that's, that's donated at meals like this, with this organization, eight dollars has come back in tax um, in tax dollars coming back in the community, invested into um, our conserving our local farmland, and they, they only do it because of this match, is, is the lingo, but because of the leverage that you all provide, and that is a eight to one, not, not not a bad investment. And I want to point out that that doesn't even account for the economic impact of these farms. And thinking about all of the jobs created, uh, and and the, 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 uh, the transportation jobs, and the selling in the, in the markets, and all of this is all because of that continued access to farming. I think Nash, it was a couple of years ago, you said you wouldn't be in business today if it wasn't for farmland conservation. And that's that's the power of what we do here. So I like to call that all the, the alchemy of, of harvest dinner. Um, this idea that these amazing group of volunteers and chefs bring together tonight, what, 227 people into this room to make some magic happen. And they blend all these things together. Somehow, 227 pieces of salmon come out that are still hot, um, <laughs> that are per cooked perfectly. The trick I hear is brining. Uh, was a hot tip. Um, and um, it's just... It, Every every year. So today, yes, I want to talk to you about a farm we're working on right now. Uh, this is called Wonderland the Eighty. Uh, Wonderland and the Eighty is, is an old family name for this farm, uh, and it is currently um, hundred. It is 132 acres, uh, and it's currently farmed by by the Smith family. and sixth generation of the Smith family and the Schmuck family that's working those lands. So this is at the corner of Port Williams and Schmuck Road, and if you were to drive by there today, you'd actually see a, a sign up that says, uh, current farmland project with North Olympic Land Trust. Uh, today they're growing um, spinach seed, which has that been harvested in that truck? Yeah. Okay. There was spinach seed, and it's probably now not spinach seed. Um, and then um, uh, corn for silage, and I think the corn is probably almost as high as an elephant's eye now. Um, and, um, and, and hay, and uh, this 132 acres is the largest farmland conservation project this community has ever worked uh, to undertake. Um, and to date, much of the work uh, of Others doing farmland conservation in this area have been in Dungeness and in the general agro area. 
Uh, and this in the, into the Port Williams Schmuck Road area is, is really a first drive. Um, luckily, federal and, uh, and so it's just south of Gray's March, if folks are kind of wanting a good uh, spot to find this. Great view from Bell Hill. Um, and so, so far, federal and state dollars have been fully secured uh, to do this. Thank you to our state legislators. Um, and now it's time for the community to jump in. I want to throw in some caveats here. We always need to be really careful when talking about these things. Um, we, this isn't done, and, and, and I wanted to tell you we have three, nope, four more farmland projects in the pipeline that are feeling pretty solid, and I'm sort of wood to knock on. In uh, the next three years, I'm hoping for an additional 250 acres that all seems in different places to all start coming together. My point in saying this is, um, this is our chance to move. We're going to, as Scott was talking about, sometimes we're going to need to move really fast. These dinners happen once a year. Um, and so therefore tonight, we're going to do a little bit of fundraising. We've gotten some good feedback from this community in the past that you really appreciate doing this in not very public, in a discreet way. Uh, and, uh, and so we have over the years really toned this into just simply an opportunity to ask you all to consider supporting this sort of work. And then you'll find, uh, I believe with dessert, oh good, uh, there were some envelopes that were brought to your table. I am pleased to share that if you've never donated to the land trust before, um, you know, except for maybe buying a ticket to come here, uh, there's been match dollars put up. And so there's $1,500 um, to the first $1,500 donated, uh, no, I'm sorry, $2,500 donated, will be matched dollar for dollar from folks who've never made a donation to the land trust before. Um, and with that then, so and it's all part of a larger campaign that we're in the middle of. Our goal is we're working to raise $180,000 by mid-October. Uh, to date, we're at 82,000 walking in the door today. Um, we have a goal tonight of trying to raise about $30,000 from this room uh, that's, that's part of our collective effort, and we'll keep moving forward. And what we like to do in this process is it always feels a little weird for me as one of the very few non-volunteers working on all this tonight, as one of your big staff, um, to do this uh, request. And so we asked for um, someone, come on up, Sarah, someone to just come up for just a moment and share with you why she makes this choice to support this panel. <laughs> and Sarah is the executive director with Olympic Nature Experience. Sarah Salazar Tipton. Um, Sarah and I were talking about this the other day, is we both look toward the future we see for this community, a, a nature-based preschool with, with some elementary school work now, um, is the oh, same way of getting to the same goals, just coming at it from a different angle. And Sarah has um, been a wonderful partner with the Land Trust for the last number of years. And when I, I was kind of floored, I called Sarah maybe a month ago to ask you if you were interested in doing this. And I've never had someone say yes so fast. Um, so I'm not sure what that says about you. Um, but we are so, so, so thankful. Um, and so with that, I'd like to have the person doing the hardest job in the room tonight, um, Sarah salazar Tipton. Tonight, um, I don't know about you, but dinner was amazing, and the amount of our waters clean, to keep the forests and the fields out in, the, in their community. How many of you love to drive down the road and see the fields in wheat or in rain? Yes. How many of you love to drive over the 
bridge and see those beautiful rivers. It is beautiful, and every day we are so lucky and fortunate to look around and see the beauty that is our community. And I know that we're all here tonight enjoying that. When I grew up, I grew up in a city, a very big city. I was not at all connected with the land. I had no concept of what being in nature was really like. I went to college on the East Coast in the Northeast, and I looked out my friend's window and I said, there's woods out there. That's where the dangerous people are. <laughs> and I, it took me about 10 years to learn how to be in nature, how to be comfortable outside, to build skills and memories that would allow me to go outside and enjoy myself. And then when I became a new mother, when my first son was born, I was a new mother. I was stressed out. I was so anxious. My son was fussy, and I didn't know how to calm him. And so we would go for walks. And in fact, I, my first son was born in Dungeness, and some of the places that we would walk was conserved farmland. And I would take him in the pouch, and we would walk along the fields, and he would get quiet. And I would realize that nature is a place that we can all enjoy, that we can all rejuvenate from, and also a place that we can go to to seek perspective when things get hard. I mean, when we drive down the road, it is so easy to look over to the mountains and see their beauty, and to look over to the farmland and see it changing through the season, and we're very, very fortunate for that. And I am so grateful for the work that the Land Trust does, because I hope that the farmlands and the forests and the rivers will be in this community for generations and generations to come. I'm choosing to raise my children here because of the work that you have done to conserve the farmland that is already conserved now. And I'm so grateful for that work. I hope that tonight you will join me in donating our money, our time, and our effort, and especially our money to the land trust so that we can continue to keep conserving more land. It is not just a legacy that we are providing, it is a future of the community that we live in. Please feel free to join me. There are um, envelopes on your table. I'm going to give you some information about the envelopes. <laughs> There's a donation on the envelope, um, a donation envelope on the table. The land trust will take the donations at the end of the evening in the hallway. A staff member will be able to take that from you. The land trust takes your privacy very, very seriously. And so they will never share your information. They will shred your credit card information immediately if you choose to put it on your credit card, um, on the envelope. And then if you choose that you want to have them run your credit card tonight, there will be a staff member in the lobby that's able to help you with that. Um, if, as Tom mentioned, if you are a first time donor, there's $2,500 of matching money. So please make sure that you note that on your envelope so that your money can be matched by some other donors that have been uh, generous enough to step forward to support the land trust in that way. Um, I think that's all for the, the facts about donation and looks great. So I hope that you'll feel free to join me tonight because I think this is a cause that we can get behind, not only because it, is, it serves our purpose to create a strong, vibrant community that has clean air, clean water, healthy forests, vibrant farmlands, and a future farming community that we can get behind this lovely, amazing food that we've been eating, but also because we are all partaking in creating a legacy, and that is an amazing gift, whether you have children or grandchildren or neighbors or friends or even just seeing some kids down the road. Every child deserves to grow up connected and knowing that nature is for them. So I think Gratitude is a special emotion in my life. I like to practice gratitude whenever I can because it's like a little hug for my heart and it just feels good. It helps us get in contact with not only ourselves but all the amazing bounty around us. So I hope that if you feel called, you'll join me in some gratitude tonight. I will um, ask you at every point if you feel good about that and you can just raise your glass, raise your fork, you can raise your hand and just say cheers. So I, let's practice. Ready? Are you grateful tonight? Yeah. I am so grateful for the water. The water is amazing. I step into a magic waterfall box in my um, bathroom all, all winter long. I can take a shower that's like as long as I want until the hot water heater runs out. That's an unprecedented amount of wealth that we have. People in history have never been able to take hot water showers anytime they wanted. That's amazing. Not only that, but we live in a place that's so water abundant, we get tired of it. <laughs> All winter long, we're like, oh great, it's raining again. That's going to be good for the summer snow melt, but man, are we tired of it. But think of all that beautiful, pure water that we put into our bodies 
it's the dishwasher, it's the you know washing machine, but it's also the beautiful um, water that we put into our bodies, that we wash our children with, you know, that we water our lawns with, and certainly the water that um, nourishes the fields. So if you're grateful for our rivers and all of the waters that we use in our daily lives, can I get a cheers? Yeah. And I am so grateful for the soils and the mountains. Can you imagine? Our soil is so rich that I won't point them out. My husband has actually grown weeds in his car. <laughs> in Dungeness, it is so nutrient rich. <laughs> I will mention he was a farmer for about eight years, so he was really tracking a lot of that rich Dungeness soil. The soil is so rich, and the mountains are so beautiful. We look up at the mountains, and we say, wow, the mountains are wearing snow today, or the mountains are wearing rain today, or they're, you know, they're cloud-capped. They're beautiful. Oh, they're um, decked in purple because it's the sunrise. You know, we go up to the mountains as a place to rejuvenate, to hunt, to fish, to camp, to walk. Um, and it's safe, relatively speaking, you know, from where I grew up. And it's, it's amazing. And then we go out to our yards and we grow things. Even if we don't want anything to grow, we grow things. <laughs> so if you're grateful for that rich soil, how much of the soil was used in our dinner tonight? How much of the soil do we use, you know, in our own lives to just nourish our own food, grow our own gardens? Many of you are farmers or farm workers and you are deeply connected to the soil and the land. If you are grateful for the mountains and the soil, can I get cheers? Yeah. And for the plants and the animals, and most especially those plants, they're amazing. Everywhere we look, there's plants, even in my husband's car. <laughs> there is plants, there are trees that are making and cleaning our air for us every moment of the day. There are um, beautiful flowers growing, wildflowers, weeds, we call them, all along the side of the road. I don't know about you, but I actually track the, um, I'm a naturalist, so I track the, the flowers. And, you know, there's actually a progression of the colors of the flowers throughout the summer. All the wildflowers, all the purples bloom around this time, the blues bloom around this time, the oranges and reds bloom this time of the summer and the spring. It's a beautiful, and this is just our, you know, our backdrop as we drive down the road. So the plants are so beautiful. And how many plants do we eat tonight? Probably dozens. That is amazing. And all those plants that were put together to make the herbs for the salmon or the you know, chutney or the gravy or the et cetera, et cetera. We just can't get enough of all the amazing plants. And all of the, how many of you love to burn firewood in the winter? Oh, yeah, that's good, isn't it? Yeah, for keeping our wood stoves warm. The plants are amazing. And if you eat meat, your meat eats plants. So that's an amazing thing too. And all some of you are farmers and raise livestock. So if you are so grateful for the plants and the animals of our community, can I get cheers? Yeah. And lastly, for our community, this rich, exciting, fun group of people who care so much about the place we live and these awesome, amazing volunteers. Thank you so much for cooking all this food, showing up tonight. You might have come here with somebody special, a dear friend, a loved one, many family members. If you are so grateful for the community and the people you're with, you can give a little snuggle to your loved ones and give me a last cheers. Have a wonderful evening. I hope you remember to donate and give to the land trust who worked so hard to keep all of that wealth in our community. Thank you. So uh, as she mentioned, if you do so, so feel so meant to give, um, there will be some actually board members for cookie jars um, for collecting them. Um, and then finally, um, you might have forgotten, but let's go back to the beginning of the night, and Susie taught us a song. Aww. And so, um, we, uh, we have put together this, this video um, that features uh, Susie and some friends of hers in, their, in, a, in a CD they got a while back. Um, and, um, you know, I think behind all of this is just about gratitude. Gratitude for this place and these people. And so here's a quick uh, music video uh, that was recently created by John Gessman uh, using a song Susie and some friends recorded. I think in 2005, uh, that's called Thanks for the Farmers, and you know the chorus, so you are allowed to sing along. And do the hand motions.
Five thousand.